what actually is Google Plus. It is a social networking site and it has a few features in there. It is in a field trial um, state at the moment, which means not every, it's not just out there in open release for everybody to have a go. And there's probably a lot of features that Google are planning to roll out into it, but they haven't rolled out yet. Um, there's no ads, which is one of my favorite things about it at the moment. The things that people can do in this site are things like sharing a lot of content. That seems to be the big focus is really um, sharing links with each other, sharing photos, sharing video, communicating, so then commenting on that, that content or actually having other kinds of interactions with people outside of that. So via the mobile site, for example, you can have chat group chat sessions, which some of us have been playing with today and you can do things like video conferencing. So there's like lots of different features that are all being pulled through into this one Google Plus sort of service, depending on where you look at it from, the mobile site or a mobile app or the desktop, you might get quite a different feel for what's actually in Google Plus. Um, so that screenshot there is just what happens when you set up a, uh, a hangout and you get a little picture of yourself from your webcam so you can check your hair and make sure your microphone's working and have you got your lipstick on or, or not as the case may be um, and it has features in there for you know you can mute the video if you don't want the lipstick's not quite right um, or you can mute the microphone things like that anyway we'll have a, a bit more of a look at that um, so that's my take on what is in Google Plus at a, at a sort of very high level look at it so if we start looking at more what are the major features in there, Sparks is one of the things that I find particularly useful. So Sparks are topics that you can follow and just see what people are sharing on a particular topic. They have featured ones, so if you go to the Sparks main page, this top section here, and they've actually got cycling and fashion and a whole heap that you can just kind of go, oh that looks interesting, I'll grab that. But you can set up your own topics as well, so you can put in some search terms and it will start to pull in content from blogs or news, um, online news services that are kind of respected sources and pull them into a stream for you. So if you're particularly looking to learn about like what's new on a particular topic, that's a, a way for you to get content that surface to you. And it's very easy from there then to share it with other people. So um, I quite like the, um, the Sparks area. It's n at first I didn't even realise it was there, but when I went looking I thought actually that's quite useful. Um, so I'm, I'm liking that. Circles was the big thing that kind of got a lot of buzz when Google Plus was first released. And the talk was really, you know, it's really about social circles analogy. So who's in what group and you can have multiple overlapping groups if you like. So it might be a topic based or it might be work based or it might be people I don't want to talk to based. It's up to you how you want to define as many circles as you like. Well, maybe there is a limit, I don't know, but there seems to be a huge number of circles you can have. Um, and people don't know what circle you put them in. So you, you won't offend someone if you put them in a circle that's called people I never want to hear from ever again. <laughs> it's <laughs> quite safe to do that. All they'll know is that you've put them in a circle. Um, so it's up to you. So I can see with groups maybe wanting to use the circles feature that you might have to come up with some agreement that yes, let's all have a circle called this and we'll all put each other into it so that then when you organise things like a huddle or a hangout, you kind of have everybody included. So. Um, I can't really see any other way of doing that apart from communicating about how are we going to use these particular circles to do it. In the desktop application, the circles analogy is not just for you know a social circle, but they actually do use a circle on the in the interface that you drag people's names into and it pops them in a nice little circle shape. When you go to the mobile, um, the app or the mobile site, it's much more like lists. So there was a lot of discussion about, oh well, circles are much easier to manage than Facebook's lists, I can't be bothered, it's too tricky in there, but essentially, if you're going to put the trouble into putting people into circles and managing them, I don't really see why you couldn't do that in Facebook as well. So I thought that was an interesting sort of buzz about well, how wonderful circles were, but essentially it's maybe just because it's this drag and drop thing that people like that part of the interface, I don't know. 
Um, yeah, so you use the circles to designate who you're going to share content with. You can share content with individuals as well, so it doesn't have to be a whole circle or a circle of just one person. You can just search for their name and add them in there as well. Um, and then I guess streams are the other major feature that, um, of especially in the desktop client, I find is of how all that shared content is served up to you. So you can look at your own stream, so everything that you've shared, or you can pick a particular circle and look at the content that people in that circle have shared, um, or you can look at the public stream of content as well. Do you want to bring up? Um, and we'll just have a look at how oh, those sorry. work. Oops. I'll just go back a bit. <laughs> so, at the moment, here's my So that's stream. your stream of everything. And then, um, so these are, don't mind sharing all this information with everybody, Nick, but these are Nick's streams. So if she clicks on Social Media Club, she will see the content that all the people she's put in the social media club circle have shared today. So, so depending on you know whether you've chosen your a particular circle, you're limiting that huge public stream or huge, well, maybe not public, but the huge stream of everything that's possibly been shared with you to a much more defined set of stuff. So depending what you're interested in or how you're feeling that particular day and whether you want to be overwhelmed with content or just cherry pick it, you can do it by looking in, in the different streams there. Um, one of the things that I've done with um, my circles is c set up one circle and, and I'm it's just called Notes to Self and there's nobody in it. And so I can just share content to my Notes to Self and then you go to my stream, which is called Notes to Self, and I just get all the stuff that it's just a reminder for me. These are things I want to go back and look at. The downside of that, which someone pointed out to me, is at the moment there's no search across that. So if that list gets really long, and I want to then, mm, there was something that I put in here back in whenever, I want to go and just find that item, it might be hard to find. But if it's thing, if you want to use it as a little bit of a um, must read list, and you know you're gonna keep on top of it every few days, then that might be one way you could, you could have a look at it. In this list up the top here too, you will see people from your Google contacts list. So they might not necessarily be, um, have a Google Plus account, but they'll be there and you can drag them in and it will send emails, notifications to them about content that you're sharing. Um, and I'm guessing that they can also then click through to actually set up their own Google Plus account. That's it. Okay, so what have I got on here? So yeah, so that's just a stream that I have in there. And this is what circles look like in the um, iPhone, I guess in the Android app as well. Uh, I only put the iPhone app on on here two days ago, I think. <laughs> so prior to that on the iPad, I was using Safari and navigating to the Google Plus website and looking at a mobile version of the site. And what you can do in that is quite different experience to what the desktop experience is. Even though on the iPad app, you can switch between the two if you want to move to the other one. Um, probably the mobile site is better designed for, for an iPad. But um, yeah, what you can do in each one is is quite different, and I found that a little bit sort of disconcerting at first. Mm -hmm. I guess you get used to it, and once you find your natural preference, you just you know you just go there. Um, yeah. So the I don't know how long ago the iPhone app was released. Um, I kept hearing that it hadn't been released, and then I thought I'd just go and check on that, <laughs> and there it was. So, so that was good. And then going into that one again, the experience between that and the mobile site is a little bit different as well. So, um, a bit later on, we might, if you haven't got it, we can huddle around literally, and um, and actually have a look at that interface as well. Um, the the desktop version of the site is where you can do Hangouts. You can't do them anywhere else. And the Hangouts is essentially just video conferencing. I think there is a limit of maybe 10 or so people. I'm not sure, does anyone? 10? Yeah. yeah. Um, from the actual site, you just click on the Start a Hangout button and it requires a plugin to be installed, which will just happen if you don't already have it on your computer. Um, and then this is what the, the Hangout might look like. In this particular one, I've, you can actually start a YouTube video so potentially you might, as a group, want to discuss 
a particular piece of video content that's on YouTube so someone can actually put it up on there, you can watch it, you can talk to each other about that particular piece of content and you've also got a chat screen over here for keyboard, you know, chatting, whatever, maybe you want to record notes about it. I'm not sure if you can export the chat to anything, whether that would be a, like a minute taking kind of... Anywhere, no. So it's probably just there for the, the time that you're actually connected. Um, so you've got some buttons here where you can invite other people into it. So you might have a group and then you want to invite some extra people. Um, you can hide or show the chat section and this is where you can change or um, turn on the YouTube aspect of it. And I did Nick alerted me to the fact that she'd heard that you can actually start a hangout from YouTube itself. So I went and had a look at that last night too. And sure enough, under the share button, if you click on the share button on YouTube, there's a start a, a hangout. You have to be logged in to, to get that to happen. Um, works exactly the same way. It just starts up this extra window with the, the talk gadget thing happening. I'm just trying to think, the, the mobile, I think it does, yes. The, the mobile version of the website on the iPad you can do check-ins and also on your, your iPhone and Android apps you can do check-ins as well. It's not all that obvious when you first look at the, um, the interface on the, the app, let me just refresh my memory, you get stream, huddle, profile, photos and circles and I would kind of thought maybe there'd be a check-in thing there as well but there isn't. You have to go into your stream and then on the top right you get a little get a little tick which doesn't really suggest to me checking in either but that's how you do it so we'll, we'll have, try and have a look at that a bit later on as well um, the huddles is probably the key thing about the um, the apps that is a bit different to the other parts of Google Plus and essentially it's a private group chat I guess Michael's definition <laughs> Is this a private group chat? <laughs> Actually, yes, that's a really good definition. <laughs> um, so basically, you start a huddle and you tell it which circle that you of people that you want to be included in, in it. Um, and then they just get a stream of little chat messages that goes to everybody who's, um, who's in that circle and who's actually got you know, the iPhone app, I guess, um, available. How does it compare with Facebook and Twitter? So this is, people have sort of said, well, why would I bother to use it? Um, and this is a, Lauren Dugan developed this grid comparing the different features across those three major sort of social sites. This was back in July, late July. Um, and uh, when was Google Plus launched? It must have been early, 1st of July or something. So this was only, you know, quite early on and maybe this, it needs updating. I haven't had a look at that. But um, when you compare Google Plus in this middle column with Twitter, you can see that there's you know, a few gaps there where it doesn't quite match up. And with Facebook, there is a lot more overlap, but there are some things that are different. So I guess the points of difference um, with Facebook is Facebook's two-way following, whereas Google Plus, you can just have one-way following. You can just follow somebody and they don't have to ever return the favor. So business interests, things that I've heard that different businesses might be, why they might be interested in using Google Plus. One of the first early ones was um, there was notification that Dell were interested in using Hangouts for providing customer service. In terms of you know the exact nature of that, there wasn't a lot of detail in the article, but I can imagine um, things like providing help, one-on-one -on -one help to somebody who's having a problem with a product, or how do I do this? actually having that face-to-face -face connection via video may be the answer. Um, you know, potentially you could even hold something up to your webcam and go, this is the problem I'm having, you know, and they can go, well, this is how you need to resolve that. <laughs> so not just help, but um, you know, customer meetings perhaps with people who just really cannot, you know, remotely located or whatever. So um, I can see some potential there. Probably you've got some ideas too about how that could be used. Um, business profiles. There, there must have been quite a few businesses starting to go. Oh, I'm going to set up a, a business Google Plus account and you know use it the same way that they might use a, um, a page or a, um, or a group in Facebook. 
and very early on Google put out the message, well, you know, stand by, don't, please don't do this, we are looking at what business services we can provide in that area. So we're yet to see the shape or form of those, but um, that, you know, that will come as well. But it's the same kind of another angle for engaging with, with your customers or with your um, colleagues or whatever around that way. Driving web traffic, I've included this particular infographic from Larry Kim who had actually gone and had a look at where traffic was coming to his site. Um, Facebook was still, you know, nearly half the traffic was coming via links in there. Um, Google Plus was at 15% and this was on the 1st of August. So this is within, you know, six weeks or so of launch and a good chunk, a decent chunk of traffic is actually starting to come from Google Plus. So even at that early stage, they're going, we can't ignore this. We have to figure out what we're going to do here. Um, and, and make the most of it. Twitter, of course, was still about a quarter and um, LinkedIn was here as well. Although I've heard quite a bit recently about LinkedIn is actually driving a lot more web traffic as well to different sites. So that Google Plus and LinkedIn may actually be growing in this segment. It'd be interesting to see um, you know, an update on this in, in a couple of months or so and see how that's gone. So what else did we have there? Integration with other Google products. Now Nick brought this to my attention the other night as well in terms of Google uh, rebranding, reorganizing their user interface for things like Gmail and <laughs> Google Docs and everything else to match what they've delivered in Google Plus. I quite like it. It actually kind of works for me. Um, and so perhaps, you know, this idea of the one-stop productivity hub may actually be a terrific thing as well. So does Google Plus kind of fit in there almost like a can you use it as a social intranet sort of yeah. thing with, you know, all of your colleagues in a circle or I don't know, and then linking to particular documents or whatever that you're sharing. So, you know, some creative thinking there about how that all might pan out, I don't know. <coughs> I mean, that's not to say it's going to work for everyone, <laughs> but <coughs> there's some potential there. One of the things that's been a big, um, big buzz around as well is the real names policy that Google has for Google Plus, where you have, <coughs> excuse me, I might just grab some water, where you have, thanks Christy, where you have to um, <coughs> use a an account name that appears to Google to be a real name, um, and there's been a lot of um, unhappy people because they have well respected online identities that aren't real names so they might you know, I'm just trying to think of an example of some a real one but um, you know they're no, they're known as civil libertarian and they hold their blog and everything else is about you know civil liberties and that and uh, you know th you that kind lean, of topic from yeah and and Google won't let them use that as an identity in Google Plus. And so, well, what do I do? That's how I'm known. It's not that I'm not a real person just because I'm using this. That's my, you know, my people who follow me and interact with me know me as that. So why shouldn't I be able to use that and translate it into the Google Plus environment? And then there are people who actually do have real names like um, a person called Violet Blue. Yes. And they said, that's not a real name. She said, actually, it is a real name. <laughs> and her concern was that um, they didn't actually communicate this with her very well. It was She found out by accident that her account was under threat of being closed um, after it had already, you know, they'd already started highlighting it and, you know, she found out, oh, I, my account might be closed in three days or something like that. Um, and then... It, Apparently they verified who she was and they said, oh, actually, yes, you are a real person. And she was quite offended that, yeah. you know, how dare you tell me that, you know, deign to admit that I'm a real person. I told you I was a real person. Um, and the flow on effect is, I believe, or I've heard that if they were to close your Google Plus account, that you'd actually lose access to your Gmail. And then, of course, there's some different innovations that have, you know, people are looking at Google Plus going, oh, it would be good if it did this, or it would be better if that, or how can I integrate this or that? So... I thought I'd just throw a couple of things up that um, where there's been some innovation in this area. So this particular thing here is called Google Plus Counter and it's created by Ralph Rotman. It looks kind of like Google Plus too, styling wise. I don't know if I'll get in trouble for that. 
but basically it counts people on different lists um, and who's popular in what particular topic area. So you can kind of go there, a bit of a directory, look up who might be interesting to follow and drag them into your circles. So, so that looked quite interesting. Um, and then of course in the Chrome browser, there's a whole heap of different extensions that people are developing to add functionality into Google Plus as well. So I've, um, <coughs> I've actually installed one called Surplus, which puts a little button in the top of your browser and shows you your notifications. So you don't actually have to have Google Plus open in, in a window, but you can see if there's something there that you want to go and look at and you can share directly from that as well. So you're just you know, surfing around the web, you find something useful, you click on the Surplus button and you get the option to share directly from there, add in a comment or whatever. So, so that's quite nice because you know this being able to share from anywhere is something that's well it's important to me um, because that's the barrier I've got at the moment is that it's not that easy I have to go to Google Plus to do the sharing whereas I want to be able to share from Zite or Flipboard on my iPad or you know from from anywhere or I want to be able to put in a, a tweet and just include a hashtag and it will automatically go to Google Plus. So those are the sorts of things that I'd really like to see happening. I just thought I'd throw this up as well. This is Robert Roberto Corsini who um, I just happened to connect with recently on Google Plus. He's actually a librarian in Helsinki I think. Um, he was writing an article about Google Plus at about the same time I was looking for interesting bits and pieces. So he, he put this um, asked me this question and I thought well maybe we want to have a little chat about that too. So what do you feel are the three key strengths of Google Plus and here's where privacy is as high or as low as you want it to be. So you've got control over how public you make something or how um, you know closed it is. Um, asynchronous connections and networking really work for your benefit if you're looking for new contacts and information. So being able to connect with new people that you, you, know, you haven't been aware of. Quality of content is high because of the way the privacy works. Um, and Hangouts are a unique service not found anywhere. So that, those were his sort of thing. I mean, I responded and I said, well, I love the fact that there's no ads in there. And he said, you know, I haven't really thought about that, but now that you've mentioned it, it is really good. But he's very pessimistic about that one. So um, I will make the slides available and there are some links in there for, well, there's my collection of bits and pieces that I found while I was working on this. Quora has got a whole heap of questions and answers about Google Plus. If anyone wants to go and or ask a, a new question, you can do that as well, but you can see what people are talking about on there. Um, and Axel A. Gray has a collection of articles on Google Plus on Scoop It. So it's another place that you just, if you just want to see what's latest or what's new, you can go and have a look at those ones. So that's the end of that.